I went through and um, resoldered up some dodgy looking joints around the frame apple valve and some other components around that area and um, unfortunately no, it wasn't something as simple as that so um, I might have to do a bit of uh, circuit tracing and see what's actually wrong so see what uh, see what voltages aren't there or what is there or what isn't there so um, I've got the circuit out here the Philips F2 ZN chassis. So just the circuit just goes through and just explains everything. Pretty typical generic service manual. And we go to the back, we've got the circuit here. Um, it's a fairly it's a fairly conventional um, setup. Uh, sync separator valve signal gets picked off that. Runs into the vertical oscillator, which in turn drives the amplifier section, pinner section of the PCI D5, which in turn drives the frame output transformer and gives vertical deflection. Pretty straightforward. So I think the first thing we'll do is to um, I think we'll, we'll do some voltage measurements around the PCI D5 and see what voltages are there, and that might gives it the clue as indication as to what's not running. <coughs> Okay. Turn the power on and wait. Of course it's not analogue TV, so we're not going to pick up any stations, are we? A bit chance of that. Okay. I think we've got, I think we've got the HT here, we rustling up. There we are, okay, right. So, let's have a look and see what the circuit calls for. Okay, so, uh, let me see, we'll check the I'll check the um, pentode section first to see what as we can see what's sitting there. So let me see. We've got it's with 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 work. Let's work back as we've got pin nine is meant to have zero volts on it. And pin nine, which one of the grids calls for zero volts? It's pin nine here. It means to be zero. It's slightly high. It's sort of slightly high. So pin eight is cathode. It's to be 18 volts. So it's slightly high at 21, that's probably okay. Pin 7 is one well, of the B plus rails. So it calls for about 200 and about 200 and so it calls for about 217. It's slightly high, it's probably because probably because there's no load. Pin 6 is the anode, should be about 235. 243, that's probably quite okay. Uh, now, pin uh, 5 and 4 be filament. So, pin 3. Uh, pin 3 is meant to be, which is, which is um, the cathode. Um, I think that's 18 volts. Again, slightly high, but it's probably because it's, it's not. Oh, I'm finding the oscillator is not running. Pin 2 is meant to be. 6 volts, well that's sitting at 20, so that's an indication. What's, what's the anode volts to that? Ah, okay, it probably explains why. Okay, so it looks like the oscillator section isn't running on here. Because <coughs> pin 1 is meant to have 56 volts on it. And we've got about 1.8, it's sort of, hmm, look at it, it's all over the bloody show. Can't make up its mind what it's doing. Okay. And of course, um, pin 2 is the grid, the drive, so it's meant to have 6 volts on it and it's got it's got 20. Okay, so the oscillator's not running. Okay, and if we follow that there H so it goes probably H comes 
down to here goes through the one of the windings of the front wheel transformer and we've got a 22k we've got this probably height and there's a couple of pots there we've got 3.3 meg resistor 3.3 meg and that comes M comes from it's the boost supply it's the boost supply up there I find my resistor comes back down there okay so we've got something open circuit here don't think anything's pulling pulling the supply line down at all I've got a hunch we've got a resistor open circuit here I think because it could either be that 1.5 meg that's open well actually now hang on because now that was open be getting no drive to the picture tube so that's probably not that um, so let me see could be that pot could be open or it could be that 3.3 meg resistor because that's directly in series with that pot goes through one of the windings of the output of the, of the flyback of the vertical output transformer which in turn feeds it hmm. okay so I wonder if we've got a problem with that resistor. I might just swing the board and have a look. Um, oh, hang on. I better put that piece of wood back in place. <laughs> we might have some sparks otherwise. Okay, let's have a look. Is that 3.3 meg down here? Okay, we've got 814 on one side of it, and we've got uh, a few volts on the other side. One mind bet, that resistor is open circuit. Okay, one mind bet, that resistor is definitely open. <clears throat> so if we just hook that one to there. Yes, the set is turned off by the way. <laughs> I wouldn't be doing this with a turned on. <laughs> it might fry my meter. <laughs> uh bingo. Yep. I'd say that is definitely the problem. Looking at that. I think we've just found the problem with no vertical on this thing. Alright, I'll go and change the resistor and we'll see what happens. Okay, I've installed the new 3.3 meg resistor. Um, the one I've put in is totally overkill for the circuit. Um, <laughs> it's about a 2 or 3 watt one I've put in there, but I've actually got heaps of these um, RS resistors, new old stock ones. I've got like about a dozen of them or so. So I don't think I'm going to use up those anytime soon. Um, so I'll put it in there, at least it'll uh, prove a point. I can almost guarantee now we will get a raster. I'll be very surprised if we don't actually. So Yes, and you'll love my uh, quality uh, 300 ohm to 75 ohm ballon here. A couple of crocodile clips running, in, running into an RE fleet. <laughs> I haven't, I've, I've, got a, I've got a lead somewhere, but I just cannot find it. So this will be a temporary solution in the meantime. Now how I get around actually running all my old TVs, I've got down here an old Mitsubishi HS411 VCR. Now this is a HIFA model. Now the beauty with these things is they seem to ignore macro macrovision. So you don't have all that macrovision effect affecting the picture, which is actually really great. Um, you know, I've played several DVDs through this when I'm testing stuff. I've never once actually encountered any problems, even with my other setup in the in the main room there. Same thing. Um, so just got a cheap Dick Smith DVD player running in via the AVs and my test pattern DVD. And um, yeah, this is pretty much how I'm going to have to run on my vintage TVs until I get a set-top box sorted down here. But um, it's not really important at this stage, so. I'm I guess it's just going to be situation normal until I get something sorted. All right. Okay, so let's give this thing another go. Let's see what happens. Okay. 
Aha. Uh -huh. Yep, we should have something on the screen now. I can hear the hear the uh, video output transformer buzzing away. And yes, we do. Surprise, surprise. Let me just turn this whole thing around a bit. So you can actually see what's on the screen. Uh, without knocking the whole lot over. Okay. Well, that definitely looks a bit better than what it did last one, didn't it? A whole lot better, actually. Oh, shit. That's a bit, mm, that's a bit ominous. There's some kind of... When I turn the brightness up, I get some kind of, like, arcing or some kind of effect. It's, I'm not sure what that is. Alright, let's see if we get anything at all here. Here we go. There's something there. Now, due to the YouTube police, I'm going to have to have the sound turned down because um, one of my other videos, the whole entire audio track got muted because there was a song which breached copyright. So, from now on, it's going to have to be a, a noisy whole lot of jubble noise or a constant tone from a single generator. I think it's actually a bit ridiculous, but oh, well, that's the way they want to do things these days, so... Yeah, but yeah, there is definitely, it's a good audio there, but it's completely and utterly out of tune. Oh, gee, this looks a bit crap anyway, doesn't it? And the fine tuning is stuck. I can't actually adjust the fine tuning on it. Um, but um, yeah, the picture tube's excellent. Really, really bright. Yeah, now the tube on this is really good. Um... Yeah, like I said, I've got several of these. I've got about three or four of these. Um, I've got a real, real mint one in my other room there, which is totally immaculate. And I've got another one, which I was given years ago. And another one out in the garage with missing back and no valves. So, you know, as I mentioned, I got this thing recently. I thought, oh, well, stuff it, might as well see whether it goes. And so far, it seems to, seems to do what it's supposed to within reason. I suppose I'll get pinged for that. <clears throat> but yeah, okay, well that's definitely a start, isn't it? I can't actually Yeah, that's flopping around like a like a cock in a sock, so I can't actually it's not right there. Normally, it, normally that, normally that actually, normally it clicks. Normally they, normally you feel like a little click as it goes in. You actually feel there's like a little, a little, um, a little keyway which grabs a little slug or a little wiper and turns it. But in this case, it just it's just not doing nothing at all. It's as loose as all buggery too, which probably doesn't help. But um. At least it's going. At least it is vacuuming. It's better than nothing. Dirty valve. Dirty valve sockets, I dare say. Wiggling the first and second. Uh, video AF valves are dirty valve socks, I dare say. Again, not surprising. But um, I'm just going to say something about these about about, about these t about these these older Philips TVs. They seem to be the only ones that have seemed to have survived. You know, um, out of all the old vintage TVs in New Zealand, Philips seem to be the only ones. I think due to because generally most of the most of these, the actual components they use, the quality of these components is actually really good. Like, you know, these, these polyester caps, as you know, they, they, they never fail. They're just so reliable. And um, even these resistors, you know, these typical Phillips resistors, they just seem to be, again, fairly reliable. I don't seem to give much grief. Um, I wouldn't probably trust those, but, um, but uh, yeah, well, I mean, you know, I'm probably not going to restore this. I might just try and get it going and run it and see how it goes, because I said I've got several others anyway. Um, but, um, yeah, the filter cap's dead cold. Um, 
In fact, the very first TV I got from the tip was actually one of these. Um, as a small kid, not this mo not this model, but an actual later version. And I managed to get it going, and that's what got me hooked on old TVs. So it was a long, long time, over 25 years ago. Probably even more, actually. So yeah, um, these sets seem to have definitely outlived their predecessors. So I suppose that's this got one thing in their favour. But um, yeah, check out that speaker. That's quite interesting. They've got the magnet on the inside. Um, obviously for space reasons and to keep and stop the magnet interfering with the pitch geometry as well so it's quite yeah, typical Philips, so quite ingenious quite ingenious indeed and there's a valve location chart up there as well just for, just for everyone's interest yeah um, now is that getting hot? no, as you can see running quite cold that is See, I think I mentioned these filter caps, these AC mains filter caps have, 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 have a habit of leaking and blowing their guts. Remember one I had, it, it thing literally exploded inside the set. The back was on at the time, but it's made a, just it blew out the side and there's a big, just a big thing of foil and tar all sort of splattered across the port. And boy, it, boy did it stink the workshop at it. Absolutely right, it was ranked, reeked. Um, yeah. <clears throat> I'm gonna still, still, uh, generally, yeah. What? See what's happening there? Is when you push it in, you get a. Let me uh, try to pronounce it. Click. You can sort of feel it clicking as it goes in, like there. Like that. Whereas these other ones, back here, I have to say though, too, these um, high Z output transformers sets too, they give really, really good sound. Like the amount of bass that was coming out of that, to, the amount of bass that was coming out of it before when I when I had it mistuned, um, yeah, the sound quality is excellent. Really, really good. In fact, so much was making the actual speaker grill buzz. <laughs> the thing was vibrating. So, by the side here, actually making this thing buzz. So, this is quite loose anyway. So, but, um, well, it's actually looking pretty good actually. Really, it's actually, it's actually probably actually improving. No, I think I think that I think that pitch has actually improved a bit with use. It looks a wee bit, a bit more clearer than what it was. We'll bring the height down a wee bit though. Um, now, which one's height? Is it this one here? I don't know one of them's height. That one there. The top pot's a bit dirty too. It's a bit better. The high pot's a bit dirty as well. Okay, no. Oh. Height pot's a bit dirty. That's all there. Probably not the um it's not locking as good as it could be, but it's probably the oscillator could be slightly out or something, I might need adjusting. But, uh, yeah. Oh well I might um might uh, just might wrap it up here for now and um let's see if I can improve the picture wee bit, do a bit more tweaking. And um, yeah, I guess we will. Uh, I'll pick up next time from where I left off in this video. So thanks for watching, and um, yeah, I'll uh, no doubt be fiddling around with it again soon. And yeah, I'll bring you an update when time allows. Radio. Cheers, guys. Thanks for watching.